my name is uh, Hasnain Devji. Uh, I'm a pediatric dentist based in Vancouver, British Columbia. I was born in Uganda and moved to Canada about 40 years ago. I'm also a, a member of Global Kindness Foundation. I started about uh, 2005 and I joined an organization called Kindness in Action, which is a uh, Canadian-based uh, charity which does work in Central and South America. So my first trip was to Honduras. I went with my wife and three of my assistants. And after that, they had me lead a trip to Peru and Nicaragua until in 2008, I ended up in Iraq um, on a Ziarat visit. And at that time, we um, went to a refugee camp uh, outside of Najaf. And we got back on the bus and I told my wife that we are coming back to do some dental work here. And that's where the inception of Global Kindness Foundation came. And I'm addicted to the kind of work that we do. I think what inspires me is we here in the West are so fortunate. We have so much. It behooves us to give back. For us to just sit here in our cozy environment and just say, well, the world can do what it wants and we are just going to be insulated is a hard thing to do. Children all over the world grow up you know, innocent, etc., cetera, and, and circumstances change them. And if we can do just a little bit to help them out along the way, it gives you a lot of satisfaction. I became a dentist as well and uh, following in his footsteps. And here we are, we're at the, uh, the Abbotsford Food Bank, um, doing volunteer work here. Uh, to be completely honest, the volunteer work my dad does has been a huge inspiration for me. It's actually the reason why I actually chose dentistry as a profession, so it was very natural for me uh, to seek out opportunities like this to give back in my own community. Um, I'm not always as free as dad to go and uh, do crazy trips all over the world. I have joined him uh, multiple times, uh, but uh, this is something that, uh, that I like to do in a, in a small way to give back uh, in, the, in my local community. I am Laura and I've uh, known Dr. Debji for 20 plus years. He was just very warm, welcoming. I actually didn't know until recently that he did all the charity work. I have blown away. I didn't even know he had three offices as well. Just the fact that he has so much time to go and do all this extra work and help people out. And he's very humble about it. He doesn't have it plastered everywhere knowing that this is what he does. You know, that one smile you get in that one trip from one child or one parent is more than enough to, to give you that satisfaction that you've done something that's been worthwhile. Charity in itself, I think, gives you more than you give out. Um, and it's just that, that's the feeling you get. I think the mosque gives them an identity. And uh, fortunately, this mosque, the identity in the mosque is very Canadian as well. I think we identify ourselves as Muslim Canadians or Canadian Muslims. So I think it gives them a grounding in Canada. I think that's the important part. I believe that, again, children in the West are grown up in a spoiled environment. They've grown up with everything they want in most cases, and they don't realize how lucky they have it. And I think these trips have sort of given us given my children especially uh, another grounding. They know what is a want and what is a need. We've actually grown closer to the kids. As you travel, it's a lot different environment than being at home. I feel they've grown up a little bit with that as well. I think one thing that I've learned from my dad and, uh, and both my parents actually my mom as well is, uh, is to practice gratitude. Um, understanding that you know we're really lucky uh, to be where we are, to have what we have. Um, and you know, the way to, to, to express that gratitude is to give back and, uh, and to realize that uh, not everyone is, is as blessed as we are and, uh, and just kind of share that blessing around in whatever way you can, big or small. Uh, my name is Cindy Gonzalez. I am a sedation dental assistant. I have worked with Hasname for 29 years. So we started out together 
and we are still working together. There's a lot of us now, there used to be two of us. So we have grown up somewhat together. The practice has evolved. He's become a pediatric dentist. Sedation has become part of our practice. And so we've, we've worked together closely for a long time. I am, cannot believe the energy that guy still has. <laughs> He is amazing. He just is never tired. He is always happy. He really lives from a place of passion and caring. And I admire that for sure. It's something I strive to, and I'm very indebted to him. You know, he's sort of included me on this path and he's a very kind, caring, happy-go-lucky, um, person and it's very nice to work with them here and it's very nice to work with them when we go overseas we've sort of have this passion that is aligned so it works quite nicely together please stop the machine immediately <laughs> one way, way, way <laughs> i'd say watch out hit the floor <laughs> Wang yeah. Wang's voice, but no air discharge. discharge. What does Wang Wang's voice mean? No, and then smoke will come next. <laughs> He does a lot of charity work outside in the community. There's a lot of families that can afford treatment. Single moms, families that um, have come abroad, refugees, whatnot, and we help them out as much as we can financially so with treatment and uh, so that they can have it done. famous uh, Whistler Mountain which was the site of the 2010 Winter Olympics. It's uh, considered one of the best ski areas in uh, the world. We're going to go along what's called the Sea to Sky Highway as it goes from the Pacific Ocean along House Sound all the way up to the mountains which is uh, the Whistler area. And inshallah today we are going to do some snowshoeing. You know, a family is the heart of the community. Without family, what would we have? And uh, I think interacting and with the children, raising the children is, is probably the most important thing in life these days. Plus, it keeps me younger. I, I do activities with the kids, I feel like I'm young. Anukshuk. That's what this is called. Nukshuk is an uh, Inuit um, term for, if I'm not mistaken, um, wayfinder. They used to put these rocks up to show the way. My name is Lyle Ralston. I met Hasnain about 20 years ago. Uh, my youngest son, four years old, needed some dental work. Well, I've been working on him since 2006. Uh, aches and pains that come from dentistry as well as pretty extreme exercise and working out and he's just quietly very competitive absolutely i'm gonna see you fall and it'll be fun <laughs> i think he stays younger because of the work that he does and helping other people i think he i think he's a more energetic person it keeps him thinking differently and outside the box whenever he goes into a new situation. And he enjoys the contact with people, he enjoys the help that he can do, and he enjoys following up. So I, it just makes him a better person. Sharper, healthier, younger, more glad to be alive than what you see in most people. I've never been to Iraq before, and uh, something that I've always wanted to do is visit the shrines of the grandson of the prophets uh, and visit um, Karbala, um, which will be an amazing experience for me. Um, since I finished Hajj, the last year I've got to do, or the last visitation I've got to do, is to go to Karbala. And so allowing myself to go to GKF and do my uh, pilgrimage at the same time uh, will be really fulfilling to me. I think the first main challenge I'm going to face is the obvious language barrier. Uh, we say that 90% of what we do as dentists is all about communicating with our patients. Um, and for me, the main difficulty will be that the patients speak Arabic and I speak English. And I think that's one of the reasons that more volunteers need to get involved uh, with GKF and that we need more translators or people getting involved because as dentists, 
we'll always find our job difficult to do if we can't communicate with our patients. I think the second main challenge I have is treating children. Uh, GKF is primarily based around treating children with dental needs who haven't had the same opportunities as children who we have in the UK. And so the dental challenges will be more complex, but hopefully we can make a difference when we're over there. One thing that I always regret is that I've graduated for two or three years now, and I think that I could have got involved with this much sooner. Uh, during university, I got interested with some charities, uh, but I never properly committed myself long term. And for me, since coming back from Hajj, I made myself the promise that I'm definitely going to get started now. And inshallah, if this trip goes well, it will become more of a long term thing for me also. My name is Zuhair Marali. Dr. Asneen Devji is my first cousin. So I'm an optician. That's my main job. Yes, and, and in Iraq as well, I dispense classes. So the first time when we went to India, I, uh, I saw as many patients as I could. And I was overwhelmed as to the amount of patients that came. I was telling Hasnain that, you know, we'll perhaps only see or capable of seeing maybe 20 or 30. But I believe on the first day I was able to see a hundred and it was so overwhelming. In that time I felt that perhaps uh, we needed more help and more professional help. Perhaps we should get in more optometrist or perhaps in future an ophthalmologist as well. So that's how it began and we saw the need for that. Yeah, I would select some frames from here, take it with me or order from our supplier and ask them if they would give us better price or special price for these type of trips and often they're willing to do that. There is a supplier in Toronto that really donates us the frames to take to Iraq. And you know, on behalf of the vision of the optical group, we'd like to thank him for doing all that stuff for us. The setting in Iraq right now, the way we have it is we would set up in a classroom as opposed to what you see here, a room specifically designed for testing. The first thing that we do is we screen the patient. So we put an e-chart up there to see what the level of vision it is. So that's just the primary basic way of knowing whether they have issues or not. It's not a scientific way, but that's just the start. And then we go through different channels of things where we put them in the auto refractor. If we do find that they have issues with vision, then we put them in an equipment that's called an auto refractor that gives them an idea what type of vision impairment they have. From there, they go see an optometrist who further tests them and he sees what is required. And if they do require glasses, then that's where I come in. We dispense them glasses and within a couple of days, we dispense it to them, we give it to them. So that's what we've been able to achieve in Iraq so far. I think working in a, in a low resource area, you have to be very creative. You've got to realize you've got limitations. On the other hand, you don't want to compromise your standard of care at the same time. So many times we will bring stuff with us to make sure that we are able to provide the standard of care we want. And then it's just a matter of being creative and having people be flexible. We are going to be working for 10 days and there, we're hoping to see about a 408 patients. Out of those 408 patients, we will be doing per approximately 150 sedation patients. So that's what we're packing up for right now. This is our never ending list. <laughs> so it is, uh, we know what's in Iraq, what's being stored there, what's coming from Toronto, because Jaffer has a very lovely storage spot in his basement so he'll pack some and then we will pack the rest so that's what we're getting organized for right now so here we have a lot of regulations that we have to follow we have little standards that we have to meet and because of the limited equipment that we have we are working towards getting to that canadian standard we are close but we haven't reached there yet so that's the one of the biggest challenge that we have is we are doing all these things but we're not to the Canadian standard or to the Western standard. If we have more finance, we can buy better equipment and more equipment to do better testing. And those are the things that in future, that's what we like to do. I love the people. They've touched my heart. Some of the stories that I hear about them, when I come back, I'm so excited and I share with my staff and I share with everybody. I remember in Karbala, there was this beautiful boy when we asked him, so where are you going to go after Zohar prayers? He says, well, my mom's going to have a bag ready for me. I'm going to go and sell. When we asked him, what time are you going to get home? 10, 30, 11. And he does that seven days a week 
comes to school early in the morning. At that time, the whole group felt that these kids are sleep deprived as well. So, you know, you, you, you kind of feel for them. And those type of little stories when you hear, it just hurts. If I can do as much that I have in, in my power, so much better. Um, I don't think people realize when they get there and they find all this stuff ready, already set up, what's gone into it uh, on the back end. Uh, but for example, my wife who does most of the organizing probably spends three to four hundred hours prior to the trip on the phone, on emails, getting all the logistics done. Um, she doesn't think she's doing a lot of work, but she probably is doing more than anybody else right now. 